Hello and welcome to another episode of TCAP Recap. Welcome back and much love to my subscribers. If this is your first time joining us, then you have picked the right night to do so because the predator we're checking out tonight is none other than Jean Pierre Wary. Hey, I am dropping in from the future after my brother's wedding. Thank you to everybody who wished him congratulations. I passed it on. I just wanted to thank my subscribers one more time because I'm about to hit 1000 and that's super fucking awesome. I'm super excited. And for a thousand, I think I'm going to come up with my top 10 predos and put that video out after my JPW analysis for the actual Chris Hansen interview. In non TCAP related news, another creator that I really like and admire, Atozi, is being sued by some crypto bro who's butt hurt that Atozi called him out on his scammy altcoin bullshit. If you don't know Atozi, go check him out. He's pretty cool. I just wanted to give him a shout out and my support because this is a blatant intimidation tactic from the crypto bro who has way more money than Atozi because he gets paid by scam coins to help them pump and dump. But he's trying to intimidate Atozi of his free speech just because he got his feelings hurt and it's bullshit. So support Atozi if you want to, if you can, and Let's get back to the commentary. Better known as JPW within the TCAP community, this guy is like the Wayne Gretzky of sex offenders. He's a legend. Mostly because he got thrown in prison for 75 years, later reduced to 50, but he's still in there. Even better, he was one of the few predos remanded without bail, so he got thrown away and hasn't seen the outside since. Now, JPW is also known for the incredibly silly story he spins for Chris Hansen after getting caught. Some predos like Nathan Downauer can't really think of anything on the spot, so they just kind of give up and agree. Some predos like that fucker Jeff Sokol get really defiant, want to fight Chris Hansen. Some predos are just innocents caught up in a big web like Dan Allen, who was really just curious. And then there's JPW, who was not going quietly into that good night. He lied and denied until the very bitter end because this was going to be his third strike. And after your third strike, the state of California basically gets to have their way with you. And that's what they did to JPW. <laughs> they didn't just throw the book at him. They picked it back up and beat his ass up and down the courtroom with it, which is great. You know, you love to see it. But it might be even more satisfying watching him twist and squirm on the end of Chris Hansen's hook as he just grills him. But that is for next video. Tonight, we are taking a look at the long-lost JPW chat log, once considered the great white whale of Preto chat logs. TCAP's very own Indiana Jones, Joey's TCAP channel, somehow managed to track that shit down and post it on the interwebs for all the rest of us so huge huge shout out to joey's tcap channel obviously i'll include the link to their video in the description but it doesn't really get better than joey's tcap channel when it comes to tcap content i do want to provide a brief warning about the content we're about to see it is some nasty dirty shit but i think it's very important that we talk about this as a society Sweeping this under the rug doesn't actually get rid of it. It just hides it from view, which means that kids and other vulnerable populations are just more at risk. So it's good to break this stuff down, find out how it works, find out how these predators work so we can better protect the people who need protecting from them. With that said, let's get down to business. JPW was a 48-year-old sex offender who was caught in the Riverside, California sting. He had already been to prison for assault with a deadly weapon in 1981 and spent three more years in prison for rape and then again went to prison in 2000 for failure to register as a sex offender. It blows my mind that he only got three years for rape. That's way too few. That's, he should be going for 15 to 20 for that. But at least we can rest easy at night knowing that he is still locked up somewhere in sunny California. 
His intended victim was a young decoy named Luke, 13 years old, and they had to communicate over email because JPW had to go to the public library every time he wanted to use a computer. JPW claims to be a professional photographer with contacts in the modeling world. He uses this as a way to manipulate and break down the decoy's defenses, even promising to get him his Screen Actors Guild card. In the end, he claims he can't bring the camera because it's too burdensome and all he really wants to do is have sex with the decoy. So let's dive into this chat log and enjoy JPW ignoring red flag after red flag after red flag in his tireless pursuit of illicit sex with a 13-year-old boy. All right, so the first thing you may notice is the strange layout. I have painstakingly tried to recreate how it looked in the email, at least a little bit. I wasted a lot of time, but I wanted to make sure it was right. So at the top of each message, you'll see who it's from. JPW is this orange color, and the decoy, Luke, is this light blue, and... Since it was email, each message has a subject. Many of them are replies to others, but sometimes the subject will have a big impact on the chat. So we'll keep an eye on those two. I was also very careful to copy exactly what was shown by Joey's TCAP channel, including the mistakes and the typos and whatnot. And JPW, he has about as much respect for the laws of grammar as he does for the laws of society, which is to say none. I also don't know how this conversation started, but you should definitely go check it out on Joey's TCAP channel. It does a nice dramatic reading of it, but enough dithering about. Suit up everybody, because we're going in and it's gonna get nasty. The chat is apparently initiated by JPW, sending a message with the subject, you and modeling, which is one of his favorite words to misspell, so we're gonna see a lot of it. The message itself says, You might just make a good one. I'd like to talk to you about that. And the decoy replies, Totally up for it. What you want to know? How old are you? How tall? Wait. I saw you on XY. Are you gay? Being gay is really cool if you are. And would you be adverse to meeting me in town yet alone? The ball's on this guy. Maybe it's because he's on email, so he doesn't have like a fast chat back and forth. But he goes and hits all of the Predo checkpoints one by one, establishes that he's 13, asks some creepy questions about his dimensions, mentions that he saw him on XY, which must be some sort of ancient social media or ancient chat site. I'm not really sure. And then crucially, he establishes that he's gay because JPW doesn't want to waste time barking up the wrong tree. So I grew up in the mid 2000s and I remember when internet chat rooms and chat room predos were a big fear for parents and when they thought of a predo they thought of a guy like JPW who in the second message is already asking to meet alone and the funny thing is that these super blunt obvious idiotic predos like JPW aren't the most dangerous ones the more dangerous ones are the guys that groom them long term but if you were a parent in the mid-2000s and your kid was online, you thought of a guy creeping on your kid, asking him to meet the first or second message, somehow getting them to do it, and like creeping in the house all sweaty and nasty. JPW is a walking cliche of the chat room preto. Getting back to the chat, I am going to keep up these voices. I'm going to try my best to keep them the same just so we can distinguish between the two of them. I might shift as we go along. I am not a voice actor, but I want to get across the creepiness of JPW's lines and the kind of goofiness of the decoys. So that's that that was my basis for the voices I came up with as pathetic as they are. The decoy replies to JPW's question with, "Yep, I'm 13, but lots say I look older and always getting pimped by guys who want me. But how much money can I make and is it like abcrom shit?" I don't know yet. You haven't told me much to go on. How tall? What built? Do you know what SAG is? Have you ever done it with one of these guys that wanted you? Would you do it with a caring man? I don't got lots of pics, but need some. Don't got my own cam. I use my cousin's, but he lives far. 
Some guys I meet, if fuck around with, but not lots, but it'd be nice to have a boyfriend who can get me in modeling big time. I would do anything to make the big money. I send you more pics. And then the subject changes to dude dot dot dot. Where are you? Can I call you? So a lot to unpack here. Let's go back up to where we started. <laughs> He's, uh, you know, GPW asks his questions and the decoy playing it smart gives him a little bit of a tease by mentioning that he always is getting pimped by guys who want him. I don't know if he means what he means by pimped. Maybe he just means like flirted with by guys that want the decoy. But I'm sure that's enough to catch JPW's attention and reel him in a little bit. He's definitely going to bite on this hook. That's for sure. And this Abcrom shit. Just a very dated reference to Eric Crombie and Fitch. Which was the clothing of choice for many, many, many high school kids in the mid-2000s. I never wore it. I was more of a Zoomies kid myself. But... I remember back in the day, they would have live quote unquote models that would just like pose in the windows with their shirts off. I know that there have been like YouTube videos and whatnot of guys that are very chiseled taking their shirts off in front of an Eric Crombie and Fitch, but that was shit that Eric Crombie and Fitch actually paid guys to do to just stand there looking muscular in their jeans. And I remember a trip I took to the Mall of America years and years and years ago in Minnesota. And they were a hit, these guys. All the tourists would take pictures with them and like the girls would take pictures with them. It got kind of creepy because a lot of the girls were like teenagers and I, I don't know how old the guys were, but I assume they were older than 18. Just a very questionable business practice in general, in my opinion. But I'm sure it sold a lot of clothes, so... Maybe I'm the fucking idiot. I'm getting off topic here, but I feel like we're finally far enough away from the you know 2000s, early 2010s, that we can really realize how fucking crazy it got in some aspects. Uh, TCAP, television shows in general, reality TV, all those dumbass MTV dating shows. TV was wild and out for a while. And we were also getting the best television ever made with The Wire, Sopranos, Oz, a lot of good shit. But even crazier was the internet, especially around like 2005 to 2015. That was the sweet spot. I used to buy a bunch of heroin off Reddit of all places. I don't mean to air their dirty laundry, but they had a subreddit dedicated to helping addicts meet up with each other in each state. And it, it finally got banned in 2017, I believe, Somebody was robbing other users on there. But I remember the day when it happened because I was saddened because it was like a big part of my history at that point. But I was also very glad that they had shut it down. It was about fucking time because it just made it way too easy to either get drugs or commit crimes, basically. It made it way too easy to make poor decisions. Um, I'm shocked at how long it stayed up, actually. It's crazy to think about the the kind of shit that people would get up to on there. And to a lesser extent, you know, the original darknet markets, like the legendary Silk Road. I don't know what the state of the darknet markets are right now. I know that a bunch of shit went down in 2017 as well, where, like, international agencies honeypotted a fuck ton of people. I'll just give a brief description of what happened. In 2017, there was a huge darknet market called Alpha Bay. Alpha Bay went offline. Everybody who was using it had to find another place to go. And soon, everybody was using this marketplace called Hansa. And for like three months, everything was good. People thought that it was anonymous. The big dealers moved over there. People were buying and selling drugs with impunity, or so they thought, until... Suddenly, Hansa was seized, and it turned out that an international confederation of law agencies had teamed up to run it for those three months as a honeypot, collecting all kinds of data on the people that were using the site. I had already been out of that game for 
like four or five years by that point. And I was extremely happy about that. I had just decided to Google darknet markets for the first time in a while. And the first Google result is this news story about Hansa happening like the day before. But all right, I that was a really long tangent. I apologize. If you do want to hear more of this kind of stuff about darknet markets or the drug trade on the internet, I would like to make videos on that. So let me know in the comments if you're interested. Let's get back to the chat. All right, so the last time we heard from the decoy, he was asking JPW, where are you? Can I call you? And JPW starts a new subject line, which is no subjects. Let's see what he has to say. Stage acting guild. You'll need SAG quality prints to get a SAG ID. I can do that. Do you know what SAG is? Yes, you already have guessed. I'm sure I also would love to get to know you. See where a relationship can go and make love. You really like me? Peeps say there's big coin and porn. You gotta pick. I would die to be your boyfriend and be like rich and get all out of here. Can I call you? What's your name? I'm Luke. You willing to send me a couple good nudes? You are one sexy boy. How tall? Give me dimensions, please. If I had a wish, I would love to blank you and swallow into everything else as well as cuddle and photo you for SAG photo ID and go from there. He's hitting that SAG ID pretty hard, which, you know, why? This kid doesn't know what a SAG ID is. He doesn't know what the Stage Actors Guild is. And he wanted to be a model, not an actor. So, weird strategy from JPW. He's not really making that much logical sense, but it is a strategy. So, he's trying. And he figures he's going to go with this photographer shit. Apparently, he did uh, photography for Kindergarten Cop, a movie at one point, and then a bunch of gay porn. So you could imagine what JPW really wanted to do with photography in this kid. Thank God he couldn't bring a camera. Probably doesn't own one, if we're being honest. But I <laughs> like this decoy has got some great lines. Peeps say there's big coin in porn. That is a primo decoy line. JPW just gets disgusting so fast. Again, this is only like his fifth message to the decoy, and he's already asking for nudes and getting very explicit sexually. But let's keep going. So the decoy is responding back to the original subject, uh, you and modeling. These two have like a dozen different threads by the end. But the decoy says, I wish I had pics, but I don't got a cam. That's my cousin's and he lives far away. Will you take some for me? You didn't say if you got a pic of you, I can see. I'm 5'7", 120 pounds. My blank is 5, but I'm still growing. What's your name and can I call you? Will you send me your pic? Where are you from? I can and will take the pics if you want. Don't have pics of me at the moment. The fire at the last place, well, they don't exist anymore. You can't send me a few nudes. I'm in LA, Los Angeles. You... I don't know. Well, hold on. Send me a number where I can reach you. Now I'll call. Luke, right? Mike here. Nice to meet you. Of course, how can I know you're not a cop or working for them or are trying to fuck with me or get me busted? Oh, that's a classic mistake from JPW. You're supposed to ask if they're cops before you commit the crime. And of course, as TV shows have taught us, if they're a cop, they have to admit it. I mean, Jeff Stacy himself told us that, and he heard it from his druggy friends, so it has to be true, right? Right, of course. This guy, this JPW fella, he is going full bore and then pulls up short because I guess enough blood drained from his dick to rejuvenate his brain a little bit, and he finally realizes like, oh shit, uh, this could be a cop. I better just ask them if they're a cop, and if they say they aren't, then I know they aren't. Imagine being at the library, you know, looking for a job or working on the computers there, and you got this old, grubby-looking fella beside you, although he's only 48, he's not that old, he just looks older, 
but you got this grubby guy beside you and he's just typing out sexually explicit chat logs to kids you would never know unless you looked over there but i'm sure he was very secretive about it it's just strange to think that you never know what the person like right next to you somewhere might be doing i always used to wonder how many cars i was driving past you know down the highway had like a kilo of coke inside of it and i would never know we should also take a moment to appreciate jpw's lie for why he doesn't have any photos of himself Apparently, there was a fire at the last place, and all of them burned. JPW, you could just refer him to the sex offender registry. I'm sure your photo's up there. Missed opportunity. But then again, the decoy is also lying, both about being a 5'7", 120-pound, 13-year-old boy, but also that they wish they had pics. The cam is their cousins, and he lives far away. I think it's these short lines like my blank is five, but I'm still growing that really convinces JPW that this isn't a cop in his mind. He would see that and be like, there's no way some, you know, big old muscly cop is going to say that. But let's keep going. Note that JPW never sends a single photo, so they have no idea what it looks like before he shows up, which is especially frightening to think if you actually ran into a 13 year old boy we're still on the you and modeling thread and the decoy says cop no i swear i'm not i told you i want to be a model and get with a boy who wants me more than just sex i swear i'll do what you say if you like me but i don't got no x pics of me but if you got a cam i want some of me i just don't got a cam i'm in mira loma and it sucks my dad is off all weekend and driving me freak but was gonna sneak out to call you how do you know model peeps? Well, I'll get the cam. You're right about porn, but that requires style and ability. I can check out both and tune you up where you need. Does it have to be a boy? I mean, but I like you want to help. Will, where exactly is M. Loma? Do you have a phone? No phone, then right. We'll figure out how to get together. I like the run-on sentences from the decoy. I think it communicates their fake age very well. They also show a decent grasp of shorthand. The decoy does say that they want a boyfriend who wants them more than just sex, which immediately rules out JPW. But now that he's said that, we'll see JPW try to convince him that it's not just for sex. It's more than that. The decoy does say, I swear I'll do what you say if you like me which enticing to JPW as that must be, it does seem to be almost pushing it. Would a 13-year-old boy really say that to somebody they don't know off a chat room? I guess it depends on the boy. Let's get into JPW's nasty-ass chat. Once again, he is talking like a seasoned cliche of a predator. I mean, talking about the decoy's style and ability skills for porn... JPW says, I can check out both and tune you up where you need, which, Jesus, I mean, come on. His ability to mask his true intentions behind these generic, innocent sounding words and terms makes him very insidious. He says this and he's using terms like check out and tune you up. But what he's really talking about is training this 13 year old boy to act in child porn and jpw is going to be his personal sex coach it's so so gross and it indicates that jpw knows what he's doing seasoned expert he has several decades of documented experience doing this kind of stuff and of course he ends it on a cheerful little note about how they'll figure out how to get together we are still in the same thread. The decoy says, It's Riverside and I got a cell, but I'm grounded from it from grades. But get it back Tuesday for school in case emergency. So you can call me on it then, but my dad got it now. I am totally pissed. Like, need when I'm going to be a model. He's a fuck blank and I'll be glad when he takes off Friday with the slut to Vegas. Woo! A lot of venom from the decoy. I think he meant to say, I am totally pissed. Like, what am I going to need school for when I'm going to be a model? But damn, he is a pissed off little decoy. He continues to say, 
Yeah, my mom is in Mish, but when I go there, I gotta stay with my grandma because the judge won't let her around me lest someone else is there. Which is a dark little detail. JPW comes back with, Too bad you can't get out now and slip down to Claremont. I could talk to you and five in my mouth would go a long way. Fucking hell. God damn, he wants the kid to come out tonight and go to Claremont. This kid's 13 and JPW's a full-grown man trying to lure this kid across cities. Horny-ass JPW continues on. You can sneak out late tonight or tomorrow. He also spells tomorrow wrong every single time. Decoy says, Wait, you just playing me for a fuck or is the modeling deal like real? I'm totally grounded because of my report card. My dad thinks I'm on here doing stuff for school now. Bwah. Dumb fuck blank he be. You're too smart to get me wrong now. You are a really cute 13 year old and I love what I saw. I need to see you in person, talk, and see what you are wanting when you're offline. Also, you talked about peeps porn. By the way, why wouldn't I want to see and taste your beautiful body? Make love to you. You are a gorgeous 13-year-old gay boy. I want to have sex. I already said that. I also want to help you get your SAG card and on the road to a coal career in modeling. I gotta say, I feel pretty nasty and dirty reading this chat log. This is rough. JPW is now laying the charm on extremely thick, trying to get this kid to look at him as a loving father figure rather than his actual father. The decoy is being very smart by showing such aggression towards his father because it makes JPW think that he can, you know, slide in and get this boy with daddy issues. So the decoy continues, I just want to know an up. I want a BF and I want to be a model. I don't care how i just want out of here like what do you do are you like a model scout and is there more coin and porn or like real shit how you know all this great questions from the decoy for jpw jpw can't answer these questions he's not a model scout he's just a dumbass preto trying to prey on this kid but as we shall see more of later jpw is very good at spinning up lies Let's see what he has to say in response. So still the same chat thread. JPW says, I am a professional photographer and have done such promotions as kindergarten cops and some porno. Gay porno films. I want to shoot shots that'll promote you. I want to do the SAG shots for you and get them in so you can have your SAG card, which you must if you are ever going to model. Real modeling is good to great pay. Might even land you an acting career. So is porn. Porn is more fun, if you see what I mean. When you say you want a BF, do you want to have me inside, or you inside me, or both? Can I taste your nuts? Will you suck me? That's what porn is. Lots of all-day sex. How can I promote someone I never had lots of hot sex with? Alrighty, that, uh, that's getting graphic. It's getting real explicit. I feel like I'm besmirching my honor even reading this out loud. He's also upping the lies and the promises. As far as I'm aware, you don't need a SAG card to model. Models aren't actors. But he's going to keep pushing this because he thinks that this 13-year-old boy with daddy issues, you know, he wants to become a model. So JPW is building his web of lies around that central desire, trying to reel this kid in. He's given this kid the old Wolin 1-2, where first he brags about his power and influence and ability to give the kid a modeling career, just like Dr. Wolin bragged about his cars and money. And then he gives them the sexual requirements. Yeah, I can get you all this, but you gotta let me taste your nuts if you want it. He's linking this kid's dream with having sex with him, with JPW. Which is why at the very end, he says, how can I promote somebody I never had lots of hot, hot sex with? The clear implication being, hey, you have sex with me, all your dreams will come true. Let's keep things going. Decoy replies back to him, man, I wish you had a pick and you can do what you want to me so you know how good I am and can do it all. I swear I'm awesome. I gotta go. My time is up. Latars. You are awesome. Let's get together so we can see what you're really wanting me to promote. 
Remember, I cannot promo you as anything till we talk and porn till I know how good you are and are you willing to get better trained to make big cash? Man, I didn't sleep lots. I am so boned. You can hook me and start making coin and get my own shit so no one can take or say no when the get all freaking pissy. My dad is still sleeping, so I got a bit here. Don't know if you're up yet. Please hit me up if you're here. Again, huge red flag for JPW. This kid is talking about letting JPW hook him, which, you know, prostitution and start making coin. What kid is going to want to be prostituted out by some stranger on the internet, no matter how mad they are at their parents? And really, how many 13-year-olds want to be a porn star? I'm sure many 13-year-olds don't even know what porn is or have never seen any. And then of the ones who have... Who watches a porn and is like, oh, that's what I want to do. Yeah, so I'll find this stranger off the internet who can promo me because I'm 13 and get me set up with contracts and porn. Red flags, JPW, red flags. JPW replies, hey, I use a library computer and it's not going to be available till Tuesday morn. Please write till then, yet no, I'll not read it till Tuesday. You're going to do great. Just remember nothing worthwhile happens overnight. Let's work through this together. Let's make coin with your great looks and abilities. Can we get together this next week? Bus will get you and I to a middle point where we can talk in person and in private. Let me know. Oh boy, JPW being forced to use the library computer really slows his roll. Thank God he didn't have a personal computer of his own at home. That would have given him a lot more reach if he could just stay on there constantly. That's a fucking scary thought. Judging from the next subject line, JPW did not write back. I thought you said you were going to write me on twos, but I didn't get nothing. Did you find someone better? Please don't forget me. Twos being Tuesday, of course. And JPW replies back in the same thread. Sorry about the confusion. You are first and foremost on my mind, wishing you were on my body, and we were working on your SAG card. Take care and let me know how you and I might get together to talk and dot, dot, dot. Ugh, he's back to the fucking SAG card. But the way this message is written makes it seem like he's kind of distracted or focusing on someone else. Just he's not as intense as he was before. So hopefully he wasn't going after other actual miners at this point. Although it's frightening to think what he was doing. The decoy replies, just got home from school. My dad is going to Vegas with the hoe on Friday. You want to come over? Thought I wouldn't. He's leaving you alone. So maybe JPW meant thought I couldn't, not wouldn't. Or maybe he's just thinking out loud saying, yeah, I thought I wouldn't do that because it's too risky. But his antennae do sense that something's a little strange that this decoy is being left home alone at age 13 for a while while his dad flies off to Vegas with the hoe. <laughs> yeah, this, this decoy's got some sass on him. He replies, He always leaves me, not Biggie. So you wanna? Why not talking lots? So the decoy also sensed that distance or distraction from JPW, because the decoy sends another message with the subject line, Where are you? Asking, You don't like me no more? What I say? To which JPW replies, First, let me say that I really like you. I am wondering if I'm falling in love with you. I want to meet, talk, and I want to... Well, I want you to end up a happy guy, and I want to make love. Talk to me. What's your number? And then JPW sends a second message as well. I can be there tomorrow. How will I know how you look? Where to meet? Tell me how to find you, like, and when I spot you, I'll intro myself. Here we see JPW upping the emotional manipulation. He's wondering if he's falling in love with the decoy, which is just absurd. And then he goes on to say that he wants to make the decoy a happy guy and make love. So he's still putting the positive stuff in front of the sex stuff to make the decoy comfortable and make it seem like he's doing this for the decoy, not for his own sexual gratification. But then he's, you know, he wants to meet tomorrow. He's in a horny hurry to get this over with. 
and he wants to maintain control. So he wants to know what the decoy looks like, where the decoy lives, where to meet him. That way, JPW can get there, scope out the scene, check out the decoy, make sure it's all safe before going up to either meet him or abduct him or whatever the fuck JPW wants to do. That's also why he doesn't want to provide a picture because he knows how much trouble he's going to get in if he gets caught again. He's trying to play this as smart as he can. It's just that he doesn't have that much mental firepower. So what JPW considers to be a safe, cautious approach would appear to be wild and reckless to most other people. He is starting to fall prey to the dick brain. Let's see. Oh, another, a third message from JPW in a row. Say you know that I don't have time to shit you. I want for you what you want. I also want to be your man. Lover. I need to feel safe and I want to be with you. I want you to tell me what stop the bus needs to at since I'll be taking bus to you. You need to know that what we say and do needs to be between us and no other. Not because it will be bad, but there would be people that will make it like shit for both of us. You know what I'm talking about, don't you? Where tomorrow? What time? What will you wear and I'll recognize you and discreetly get your attention. Cool? Love. So that's a pretty long message for JPW. I like how he says, say you know that I don't have time to shit you. What, what does that mean, JPW? You want the decoy to reassure you that they know that you're not messing with them? Is this some sort of like 5D chess manipulation? Because I don't really understand it. It's also funny that JPW is the one that's commenting how he needs to feel safe when he's sexually preying on a 13-year-old boy. Of course, we have the standard preto, hey, you can't talk about this because it will be bad for both of us. People will make it like shit for both of us, not just me. And again, we see him in a horny hurry asking where, what time, what will you wear? As we get further in the chat, the more horny and impatient JPW grows. He doesn't want to expend any more effort in preying on this kid than he has to. He thinks that he's put in the necessary amount of work, the necessary amount of lies, so he wants this to happen, and as soon as possible. Let's continue on. The decoy replies, Wow, this is like a dream. I am dying. What time you want to come over? My dad's plane goes at 11 in the morning, but a bus don't come here. It's like two miles up on Lehman night. What time you come? Signed, Luke. I'll be there as close to 11 as possible so that I can call you when I am near the bus stop. I will look for you and we will discreetly go to your room and talk. And we'll talk about whatever pops up and stimulates you into whatsoever you want. So I need exact bus stop near your place and as soon as I get off, I'll walk toward your street. So you must also tell me how to get to your bed from there. Love, Mike. So you will be here at 11? My house? And thus, the dance begins. JPW is going to take a long, long time to physically get to the house, but there are also a couple unforeseen speed bumps along the way. But you do notice that he's getting bossy. You know, he needs the exact bus stop. He needs all this stuff from the decoy that the decoy is not going to know. The decoy is 13, so why would the decoy know any of the bus stops? Or how would the decoy get to the bus stop that's two miles away without a car? JPW expects him to walk there as a 13-year-old boy? Of course JPW does, because JPW does not give a fuck about this kid's safety at all. So the decoy says, I'm waiting, where are you? JPW replies, at the bus stop, you tell me to, plus I must walk from there to where? See what I mean? And JPW continues on, send me the address, the directions from the bus stop, what you look like since you'll meet me part way alone and the bus stop I must get off in order to get with you. Love, Mike. So he still is expecting the decoy to meet him halfway or at least some part of the way along, which give me a fucking break. This guy's got serious, serious dick brain at this point because he's not thinking clearly. 
And you can tell that JPW is starting to sculpt how the scenario will go in his head. Ideally, the decoy meets him partway there, and JPW is able to scope out the decoy before actually committing to meeting him. If you've seen TCAP, then you've seen this kind of thing before. You know, all these predos like to create the situation in their head, and then they fantasize about it to the point that they will begin to ignore reality in favor of this ideal situation and miss obvious red flags and clues that something's not right. Let's keep reading to see if uh, old JPW can escape such a fate. The decoy replies, My house is blank, but no bus come here and is like two mile from bus, but my dad takes cabs when he goes to airport and they come here, so why not take a cab? You gonna bring your cam so we can do model pics? And here's where JPW begins to weasel out of bringing the camera and doing the main thing that he was gonna do for the decoy. I was thinking it is much better to have get to know each other time. I may not have that kind of cash till later. Talking about the cab. Camera will be burnsome in a day of you getting to know me, my love. When does dad come home? Send me the bus stop nearest to you and I can walk two miles easily. You love me? Is it okay if I'm in love with you? If I want to care for you as my love? I found this, but I don't know lots about buses. Blank. So you're saying you're not coming at 11 tomorrow now? I want to have BF to love and help me and take care of me and not be alone. You gonna come? I don't get it. So as the time of their meeting approaches, JPW continues to pump up the emotional manipulation, stating that he's in love with the decoy, he wants to take care of him. You know, that's bullshit. JPW just wants to abuse this kid, and emotional manipulation is a great tool for doing that. It's grimly entertaining to see his bullshit come to light. Now he's backing out of bringing the camera and doing the SAG card, and getting stuff to promo this kid. Nope, he's just kind of shrugging that off, which is why he follows with this, you love me, bullshit. So after the decoy says, I don't get it, JPW replies, love, can I spend the night with you? I am cuming to you tomorrow and we'll try for 11. What is the main streets near you? I love you, Luke, and I want to sleep with you, and you and me, I want to wake up to you in the morn. And we get a new subject line, so a new thread. It's still JPW, though. Luke, my love, I need major cross streets. This is so I can route myself properly. Will your dad be gone all weekend? Do you know what emancipated minor is? I'll be there for you from the moment you put your heart in mine. Do your be, and tongue kiss me as your lover. I think he means to say put your hand in mine, but I don't know what to your B is supposed to be. But overall, just some really sinister shit talking about an emancipated minor. Uh, he's thrown some legalese at poor Luke to try to get him excited like JPW is going to take him away from his horrible father. His dad wants him to have good grades. I don't know why he's so horrible. Although it sounds like Luke is not the biggest fan of his father's current romantic partner. I'll put it that way. So let's keep going because the decoy is finally reeling this big fish in. I'm like by Hamner and Sliceman, but like I think the bus stops at Limonite that is like two mile from me. We still gonna do it all and you get here at 11? You're so nice. I want to talk now. Thank you for the streets. Is your dad gone all weekend? Is it safe for me to sleep with you at night? Please know that we must meet at a public place like McDonald's. Then you lead me to your house. <laughs> you do not want to meet with him at a McDonald's. Just ask John Kennelly. He will tell you how well Chris Hansen knows McDonald's. He knows McDonald's like he knows how to party, which is to say really, really well. But we see JPW trying to establish a little bit more control over the situation. He's gone from meeting the decoy halfway to going straight over there. So he hasn't thrown caution totally to the wind. He's still thinking about the risks and how he can minimize them as much as possible. Even though he's already taking 
enormous risks just doing just having this chat. There were a few times earlier in the chat when I thought JPW was going to figure out that it was just too good to be true, but he didn't. He gave in. So the decoy replies, I don't know how I get there. It is far and I'm scared to walk on the main road. When can you call me? Where are you? I'm sitting waiting a new email. What I do? Sorry, I had a near accident that has greatly delayed me. I still need to know how you'll be dressed so I can recognize you from a distance. When can you give me the number? So JPW had a near accident, which has greatly delayed him. I call bullshit. He was just fucking around and running late. He lies with such ease that you're better off just assuming that nothing he says is honest and you'll never be disappointed. But JP has really committed. He's on his way. So the decoy starts a new thread, subject line, question mark, and says, Was that you that called? You call him back? Janet went home now. First, you know that I can't risk prison. I would be locked up forever. And you have a friend? What, he's wanting sucked by me too? So, interesting twist here. It appears that Perverted Justice somehow fucked up to the point that when JPW called, one of the female decoys answered because Luke is now saying that Janet was at the house with him and she answered the phone. (laughs) How could they make such a mistake? I mean, come on, guys. I know it's about 15 years too late, but you can't be letting that kind of shit happen. We do get our clearest declaration from JPW of the risks involved that he knows they're there. He would be locked up forever. Not forever, but at his age, basically forever, (laughs) because he's still got quite a while to go. But he does go quickly from I would be locked up forever to what he's wanting sucked by me too. I mean, that's his follow-up to finding out that he had a friend there. And he says it in such an accusatory fashion. Reading this message is like watching his dick and brain battle it out on the page. His brain is saying, I can't risk prison. I would be locked up forever. But his dick is saying louder and louder, you have a friend? What? He wants sucked by me too? He just can't resist asking and hoping I think it's hope that makes him so accusatory in that last sentence. But he gets afraid. He responds to the decoy. I became afraid. You didn't seem to know that I was calling. Dude, chill. It was a girl from school and she needs my notes because we got project due and I was outside for a sec. I don't know why she answered my phone. I yell at her. Call me back. Call me now. Count to 60 and redial my number and please be alone. What will you be wearing when I get there? So the decoy has been resolutely ignoring that question, what he's going to be wearing. I love how JPW keeps, he has to ask the same questions over and over again, and the decoy just blows him off and doesn't give the answer. And he just keeps throbbing along, unable to turn off the course at this point. If you would stop and think for a minute, he might remember that the decoy is getting terrible grades. So what is this girl doing needing his notes? Besides which, she'd be 13 as well. So way too young to be there by herself. The entire situation is very suspicious. And the JPW of a few pages ago probably would have called it off because he was very wary of a trap. But at this point, he's already gone too far, both physically and in his mind, his fantasies. So all he says is, count to 60 and redial my number and please be alone. So he's choosing to believe this story being fed to him by Luke. And then he asks what's becoming his catchphrase. (laughs) What will you be wearing when I get there? And then he starts a new subject, you, and says, how are you doing? Can I come and you meet me in a burger place? Can I still come over? Please answer now. Will you meet me at a burger place? I need you to answer now. Love, Mike. Can't you just come here? Sure. Remind me of the address now and tell me again of Cross Street and what does house look like so I can recognize from a distance. You love me? When does dad come home? 
So a second catchphrase is starting to form. When does dad come home? I think this is the third time he's asked them that. And the fourth or fifth time he's questioned the decoy about what he's wearing. But the decoy has skillfully manipulated him to the point of no return and is now able to just kind of let him take himself right over the edge. He wants to meet at a burger place, the last semblance of control that he can have, trying to recognize the decoy before the decoy can see him to make sure they're real. He throws it out the window and is just like, fuck it. Yeah, I'll come to your house. Sure. It's not like I'm facing life in prison if I get caught by the police or if this is a sting or any number of things. And now we see a bit of a reversal with JPW sounding insecure as he asks the decoy, you love me? Let's finish up here. The decoy replies, I want to love you and see you. I don't know what you look like, but I are so cool and nice on the phone when you want to come over. Leaving in about a half hour for you. When does your dad come home? What is the address again? What street corners again? Write and answer all I need them now. Where are you coming from so I can kind of tell you how long it take for you to get here? And here the decoy needs to get this info so they can schedule JPW in around the other Predos. <laughs> oh, JPW is getting frustrated with this decoy for not answering him. But instead of recognizing this as not good danger danger he just adds on more question marks and exclamation points and plows on ahead it seems like the decoy definitely knows that they've got jpw by the balls and are just dragging him he replies you have refused to tell me when your dad is returning write me now tell me when he's returning and tell me your phone number don't forget address and cross streets I am on my way, no telling how long, but keep a light on, I am leaving now. So he goes from being pissed and angry, to being very stern, to, hey, I'm on my way, keep a light on. He just can't resist at this point, it's too late for JPW. And I mean, this is the last time it'll be late for JPW, because after this, He's in prison, and they'll keep him on time. He is walking to a date with Destiny, and I wonder if some part of him knew it. If his subconscious that was honed by years of being a sex offender were screaming, and he just went ahead kind of knowing, like, this is a big risk, but I'm willing to take it. Or if he honestly was dumb enough to think that this was (laughs) okay. So he has a new subject do not respond to this. And he says, I love you and I'm leaving. I'll call you soon. Be there, please. Love, Mike. And that is it. That is the end of the chat log. JPW, like I said, heads out for his last walk as a free man because he does not get out on bail and then gets sentenced to prison where he stays till this day. Thank you so much if you've made it this far. Your support means everything. Feel free to leave any compliments or criticisms or observations in the comments. And as always, I appreciate the like, but your view is enough. And if you like my content, please do subscribe. I'm about to hit 1,000 subscribers, which is fucking awesome and amazing. And it could be you. And who wouldn't want to be the 1,000th subscriber on a small YouTube TCAP channel, right? It's a great honor, I'm, I, I think so. But anyway, my analysis on JPW's actual interview with Chris Hansen will be coming out shortly. But until then, I hope you're enjoying yourself, whatever you're doing right now, and I'll catch you on the flip side.